I'm hearing a lot of practical. It needs to be practical. No thinking steps. Do this, do that. Anybody wasted a time? I don't you know mind me asking. EPRO. EPRO. Well, I don't know. When I took EPRO, which is the first year they had it, the, the, one of the first things they, they were talking about was what's a URL. And I thought, that's the class? Okay. I hear it's changed a lot when my team members just took it two days ago. And she came back, and she was pretty. She was pretty content with what she got, and she's very internet savvy to start with. Um, but back to talk about the, what the certifications mean to the public. Uh, it's our job to tell them what it means. So I don't just put CRS up the certified residential specialist, uh, certified investor agent specialist when I'm promoting my investors. So it gives me a little credibility that I've done. I've taken the step because people know if you've got designations behind your name, like doctor or you know, have a master's degree and you have those those letters, it means something to people. They may not know what it means, but they do know it means something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me about EPRO. I want to hear a little bit more about why you felt it was such a... I, I'm like her. I was in the first one. In fact, I got the designation EPRO 500. So I think it was the first 500 people. Um, it, it, and it was very basic, very generic. I needed more meat and it wasn't there. And I don't, I don't think I'm still a member, but I got... Brandy, you have some Just to add? comment on the public and designations. Yes, it matters, but it doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is can you sell their house and can you make them money if you're working with investors? Do you have a track record of making someone money? I mean, I have a full time job matters. in talking to consumers. If anybody's interested in knowing what they have to say, um, we can talk after the meeting. <laughs> okay, fair I enough. Find consumers. I mean, that's what my clients want. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not. Well, I think, I think that's the whole point of education, though, is to provide us with the education to give us the tools to go out there and be successful and be able to make those home sale, be able to help those investors make those decisions. And I think that's what this committee is all about: is what works and what doesn't. So, sure, good points, there, Brandy. I think I think even with consumer feedback, we have to take the, you know one size doesn't fit all. It doesn't fit all with education. It doesn't fit all with consumer feedback or anything else. Brandy, let's start with you in terms of. Um, how many CE requirements post licensing are you required? So I'm I'm actually dual licensed in uh, Georgia and Tennessee, and I believe in Tennessee. I know I have to have 16 hours of continuing it because I just finished. Um, I go this year. I was at five conferences, but none of them were state CE with over uh, 20 hours, 30 hours of education. So I actually had to go to the CE shop to get my CE. And um, I took a class. It was a six hour continuing ed. I finished in two and a half hours, got a 95 on class, and had to sit in front of the computer for two and a half hours to let it run out so I could get my CD. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so how many are you required? 16. 16. In, okay. in Tennessee, 24 in uh, Georgia. 16. Okay. And Michelle, <coughs> how many are you required? Florida, re uh, sorry. Florida requires 14, but we have a 45 hour. Um, in your second year. So when you first get your license, you have to take 45 hours, and then you take uh, 14 hours. 14 a year? Yeah. OK. David? Uh, we're required 12 every two years. 12 every two years. Okay. 12 a year. OK. I'm licensed Kansas and Missouri, and I have, I think it's 12. I don't know. I don't pay attention. I just know I have to have it, and I go do it. OK. Brooke? We have 30 hours. 30 hours every two years. Given that there's a certain number that you're required something to add. I misspoke. Ours is every two years, 14. Every 14 two years. Okay. Okay. Um, given that you have to get these CE credits in, how do you decide where you spend your time, which classes you take to get those in? Let's just start with Brooke since we're down here. Um, I actually constantly take training. Um, I actually handle part of the training for my brokerage. So I go to trainings constantly just to like see what everybody else is doing. Um, I get probably three times the amount of CE that I need, um, but I just I want to learn from other people. So I just constantly go to see. What so how do you decide doing. what's valuable and what's you know not a place you want to spend your time? I, I would definitely say that I um, I try to go to things that are focused on building business. I'm a little over all the product pushing that happens in a lot of these trainings and they're not actually telling me how to use these products to build my business. I actually went and sat on this webinar once and it was get this astronomical amount of leads in two weeks and the whole time they talked about products 
and not once did they tell me how I would use those products to get leads. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the thing. I look for trainings with agents that actually do business and are showing me how they do it. Okay. Anything to add to that? How do you decide where you're going to spend those hours? Um, for CE, I don't care. I just want the hours. I take my core courses. I go online and, and pick out the course to learn for my skills. Then I go away to some place where I can be away from my business and learn. So you don't feel you can learn with CE hours? No. No. Okay. No exceptions to that? Ever ever gotten hours in value? I'm, I'm like Brandy. I go through it in an hour and a half, two hours, and then I have to sit there for the time. Because it's basic. It's basic stuff. It's just reminding you this is what you should do. It's not developing skills. And that's what I look for my education is what can I develop my skill. Mm -hmm. Pat? I'm not sure if this, this is true in every state, but in our state, our uh, real estate commission pretty much uh, determines uh, what gets approved for CE, and it's never anything that's going to make me money. Uh, it's going to be ethics, um, purchase agreements, things that are you know important things to have, but they're not things that are practical applications except for, again, the purchase agreement, learning how to, to you know read the new ones, or, like I said, the ethics that you have to take the quadrennial things. But most CE classes are just basic, bottom line, you know, things I already know, maybe for a new agent. Basic, bottom line, waste of your time every two years? Basically, well, we do it every year, so I have 12 hours every year. Uh, one thing we've tried really hard to do at our board is to uh, bring in education to our members that the board pays for so that we provide, um, we'll bring in a CRS instructor and, and not call the CRS class just to have education for the day. Sometimes we can get that approved and we can write it correct so that the Real Estate Commission sees it as a benefit to the consumer. They only want to see it as a benefit to the consumer, not a benefit to us. And I explained to them that referral-based business is a benefit to the consumer because to get referral-based business, you have to perform. So it's, it's trying to get them to think like we think to make CE a viable product for everybody to take. Otherwise, it's, you know, go to listen to about um, a warranty for two hours. I got two hours CE that way. Um, it, it's, you know, got it. Okay. David, you've not been faced with having to choose a, a, a CE course at this point, have you? Uh, I have. I you finished have. my CE. I, when, I moved, um, when I moved over to real estate, I had about six months to finish all my 12 hours. So I did it all kind of at once. Uh, I really didn't get a whole lot out of it, even being a new agent. Mm -hmm. I took um, a contract to close class, which I thought would be great for me when I first started because you know, when you first started <coughs> kind of looking at this you know, document, like, I have no idea what many of this means. So I thought she'd be able to walk me through it. The instructor and said, you know, it was like she was just pointing out things that people who've been doing it a long time are annoyed with or struggle with in the contract, and there was no basic start to finish, which is what I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Didn't get a whole lot of that class. I did a class on um, ethics, because I think you're required to. It's one of the four classes, and then um, I know my other one was working with first-time home buyers, but nothing, you know, it wasn't anything that, I, I would rather listen to a, a podcast, that, mm -hmm. you know, from somebody that go through one of those classes because it, it was very boring. No one wanted to be there, and it was like the instructor didn't want to be there. It was just like I had something that everyone has to do. Yeah. Um, which, um, you know, makes it harder to get anything from it. So. Yeah, it's like starting at the, I don't know, finish line? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so time, what, do you, what is your thought? Where do you go to, to get those hours in? How do you decide? Well, I, I think I'm lucky because our board is really active in choosing our professional development committee at our board really takes into consideration let's only have things that people can really apply in their business. Mm -hmm. So I have had, um, I concentrate on luxury. I'm able to get CEs while taking um, classes about selling luxury homes, which I can apply in my business. And then three hours has to be core law. So we, I take that at the um, midwinter meetings for Florida. Okay. But um, like I said, I think that just because we have a great board um, that really concentrates on let's bring CE classes that are really applicable. Mm -hmm. The gatekeepers, gatekeepers in the room. Are you having a hard time hearing me? Can you turn me up a little? I'm getting that I'm hard to hear. Brandy, what do you decide? Where do you where do you go and spend your time for CE? So I want someone who's passionate about the industry. I want to learn. I look across right here from you guys, and I know some pretty kick-ass instructors in this room. And that's what I look for, is 
what are they going to give me that's going to improve my business, whether it's being a systems freak or whether it's technology or whatever. It's the passion that they bring to teaching that class rather than starting at the finish line because I don't want to be at the finish line. I want them to walk me through it, but at the same time, I want to walk away. The goal is to walk away with one piece of ah, something, just yeah. one piece. I don't. It's not even. It doesn't even have to be in the in the class. It could be in LobbyCon, because the person of the the quality of people they attract because they have the passion to teach what they're teaching, and they know that material inside and outside. And I would listen to them whether they had slides or not. That's what I look for. I know we do have a couple of people in this room that have been mentioned as some of the best instructors. Um, we polled and talked to a lot of realtors in deciding who we were going to listen to today. Um, and that takes me into, has an instructor ever played a part in whether or not you decide to take a course? Brandy? I'm, I'm going to assume I know your answer. Absolutely. I mean, if I know the instructor sells product for a living, they fall like number two. If they have passion, maybe they get a four. Um, but if they sell real estate, and they have passion, and they know their stuff, and they're a top producer. Um, and top producer is a relative term. I mean, top producer could be 10 million a year because you're in a small market, or it could be three, but you're consistently doing it, whether you have one assistant or not. I don't want someone who's been in the business for 50 years telling me what happened when they sold real estate 15 years ago in another state that they even live in. Like, I want someone who knows that stuff. And like, let me tell you, this is what happened. And someone who has a team, because that tells me that they've actually looked at the systems of what they have and go, okay, I can't do this all. I need an um, assistant, so I'm not an assistant. Somebody who's in the trenches and yes. understands what that, that just for the committee also is a resounding, the worst instructors don't have experience doing what they're teaching. Um, enough said. Yeah. Michelle? Mm. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I can add. I'm just going to say what she said. Um, we no, had the conversation know. outside and it was exactly <laughs> that. It is. I want to be um, sitting there getting information from someone who is, who is in the trenches, has done it, can tell me how I can do it and how can I leave there and implement it. That's mm -hmm. what I want. Mm -hmm. So when you're actually looking at, you know, a list of CE or courses, certifications, designations, you look at who the instructor is and that's part of your decision? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. David? Uh, my first time around, I really didn't know any of the people, so it wouldn't sure. have been an issue with me, but I did take a class with um, a broker who I later did one of my first deals with. So now, I, I remember taking his class and his name, I don't remember any of my other instructors. His, his was definitely the best class I took. It was my other, it was my, you know, not I mentioned three classes. Not necessarily it, was the one, it was the one class, I can't remember what exactly it was on. It was like the first continuing day class I took, but maybe that's why it stands out. But I did it with a guy who I later did a deal with, and I remember him, and I know if I went to do it again, I would look for, you know, maybe, if I recognize the name. What made like, him memorable? I mean, you did your first deal with him, but other, why did you remember him? The other people the I took classes with were, um, they more worked for either St. Louis Association of Realtors or Missouri Realtors, mm -hmm. um, and they were just doing education. They weren't really selling. Mm -hmm. He was a broker who I had heard of his company, and you know, I had never heard of him personally, but you know, now I know if I were to do it again, I would definitely look for his name again. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for me, going to a class where I know the instructor, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. know who they are, know what they do, would huge side effect. Okay, so is it knowing who they are, knowing what they do, or knowing something about them? Well, if I know they do something that them? I don't like, I probably wouldn't go, but, you know, <laughs> sure. if, if, but if I if I know them, if I know they're, you know, they're doing a good job in, you know, whatever area they're... Is covering. it important to you if they're in the trenches or what <laughs> their experience Absolutely. and all of that, their history? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, if, you're not going to take a class from someone like me who just got started in the business. I want to hear that you've you know, been doing this a long time, you've been successful, you're, you have things to teach me. You're not just, you know, reading from a book or a sure. PowerPoint that someone gave you. Sure. Pat, what about you? Tell us about what role the instructor plays in your decisions. Well, today it would be, you know, pretty huge because I've been doing it for so long, so I know who I want to hear, and I want to hear people who give me good value. But, you know, when I started out, I didn't know who the instructors were. I mean, I went to my first CRS class because I knew what the CRS was supposed to be. 
and I got there and um, again Ed Hatch was one of my first mentors and it was his first class to teach he would never have known that he was so good he's a great speaker he, and he spoke up from uh, things that he knew or things that he had done as a, a realtor and now since he's not in the trenches anymore he seeks other agents to find what they're doing so he can present what's going on because what works in Maryland might not work in Baton Rouge, but something that he does there could certainly con be converted to Baton Rouge. So, so the instructors are very important, but it's more of their delivery. So word of mouth is probably pretty big today to see who's got the latest ideas. Um, and you're probably going to see them on YouTube or on Facebook and then have a taste of who they actually are. Mm -hmm. before you so go. you check